Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia, and tonight I'm working on one of my weekly radio shows, Subterranean Homesick Grooves. And as I'm working on it, um, it's a Wednesday night right now as I'm filming, and the show's broadcast on Fridays. Now, as I was working on it, I was thinking, I've had a lot of uh, requests, uh, email requests from people that want to know how to make uh, voiceovers or DJ drops, stuff like that, like the introduction to my show has a... Uh, well, you probably heard it, um, has, has a little introduction, which, uh, you know, kind of sounds cool. And anyway, so I'm going to be making a video teaching you how to build those, how to put one of those together, in case you want to do it for your own sets, your own shows. Um, but as I was working here tonight, I was also thinking I should give you a couple tips for those of you that want to put voiceovers into your um, sets. I'll teach you some tips to make sure you can uh, make those sound a little bit better. Okay, so as far as voiceovers go, though, I'm not talking about professional voiceover work. There's a, there's a voiceover industry, you know, all the stuff that gets done for radio ads and stuff like that. Um, there's a very professional industry around the world, the voiceover industry, which takes care of that stuff. And if I was talking about that sort of stuff today, I'd be talking about things like uh, terms like ADR and Foley's, um, Walla, Bleeds, um, undercutting, sync, cold readings, stuff like that. Um, I don't think I'll touch on any of those today. We're, we're going to do something that's a little bit easier because we're putting our voice over on top of music. So there's a little bit more flexibility here. You know, in a professional voiceover um, situation, you're not going to have background music quite often. It might be somebody reading a book for an audio book or something like that. And so you need to have a really, really clean and quiet background. So in a situation like that, you're probably going to be working in a professional studio and you're going to be working in an isolation booth. Um, you're probably going to be standing up because people's voices sound better when, or vocalists singing also, uh, when you're standing up. You are probably going to have a very good microphone, a, uh, a condenser mic hanging there, and you'll have a pop filter. And the pop filter, I won't bother with one of those today, but that's used, it's kind of like a mesh screen, and it helps uh, eliminate some of the, the mouth noises that would carry into the microphone, because um, when you've got a really good condenser mic, you're going to be picking up a lot of really small, uh, small audio pieces. Um, there's also a thing called plosives. When you're talking near a microphone, basically there's certain consonants, consonants that you can say that it kind of makes basically a breath of air comes out of your mouth very forcefully, sharply, quickly, and that air kind of hits the microphone head and and you can hear it. And so that kind of degrades the quality of a voiceover. Um, not such a big deal today, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, but the pop filter would normally take care of a lot of that. Uh, there's also a phenomenon called simulants. And that's kind of, um, it's, it's more prominent in some people than others, but it's the prominence of certain sounds like the S's. S's. Um, and a pop filter doesn't really take care of that. You have to uh, worry about mic placement, distance from the microphone for that. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that either. Now, if you are curious and want to learn a little bit about the basics of things like plosives, sibilance, um, setting up microphones and stuff like that. I do have an audio recording tutorial series that I've uh, been working on and the very first video, I'll put the link here right now, um, if you're interested in learning more about basic vocal recording you should maybe check that out and I know that um, a lot of DJs maybe don't think vocal re or audio recording is really that relevant. Well, as a DJ, I think, I hope, eventually you're going to get interested in the possibility of producing your own dance music, okay? So the more that you can learn about the audio recording industry, the better. Um, they're very related industries. And, uh, and as far as producing dance music goes, I mean, it's not the same techniques as recording a normal band in a studio, but there's very, very many overlaps. So the more you learn about music production and the more that you learn about audio recording, um, I think the, the stronger you'll be as a DJ in the long run. Okay, so we're not going to worry about pop filters, about sibilance, about plosives, stuff like that. Um, instead of using a very good microphone, which we could do, I've got some here, but it's also possible to use a portable handheld audio recorder. Now normally, I use a, uh, I've got a Sony M10 recorder, 
Uh, it's pretty high quality. I like it. Um, it's about $200 US, I believe, 200 Canadian, 200 roughly US. And it's pretty good, except I don't have it here. So I'm going to use a different recorder than, uh, than the M10. This is called the Zoom. It's the H1 handy recorder. Um, records to a micro SD card and it will record in pretty high quality, the same quality as a CD, which is 44.1 kilohertz sample rate and 16 bits for a sample size. Uh, if you want to learn what that means, I'll put another link to a different video, another one in my audio recording series. Anyway, so this does a pretty good high quality recording. Um, and so what we're going to do, it, it works like a plug and play device. So we'll do the recording, I'll dump it onto the computer, and then we'll go in and we'll do some simple editing. Um, so as far as editing, once we get into the, that part, I'll probably, I'll have to do some editing because I'll be cutting some pieces out where I make some mistakes. And then we'll do some very simple equalization, uh, a tiny bit of reverb, and then we'll drop it into the set and, uh, and produce the show that way. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you know how to set up and record with your microphone or use your pod portable audio recorder. So if you don't figure that out first, I won't bother with that today. Um, one thing I will point out, a lot of these audio recorders, you have an option of either setting the level, the uh, record level, input level, manually, or you can have it um, auto level. And I don't like using the auto level usually. Um, I mean, some of them work pretty good, but uh, I find it safer to set the input level and always set it to be too low. Um, you, I mean, you do want it to be fairly audible. You, know, you want a fair amount of signal, but you don't want to be at the point where there's a risk of you going over the zero decibel mark, um, which causes audio distortion in a digital system. Okay, so instead of setting it so that the peak level is just barely below zero decibels, uh, I'm gonna give myself some headroom, some space at the top. So when I'm setting this, I'm gonna set it so that, the, um, so that the peaks of my audio are probably only like minus eight or minus six decibels. Okay, so I'm gonna set that right now and give it a test. Uh, input level, okay, auto level is off input level. So I have to test, test, test. Okay, that's pretty low. Let's bring it up a bit. Testing, 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 testing. And it's actually got a set of uh, meters on the side of this, so I can see where the peaks are. And right now my peaks are around negative nine, it looks like. Okay, now I'm going to set this up so that it is testing, testing, testing. Okay, it's pretty close to my um, pretty close to my my mouth, so only about a foot away. Uh, I've only got it resting on this dishcloth. I don't like putting it on a hard surface, you know, in case I bump the uh, surface while I'm recording. If it was on a hard surface, you might hear the scratch. I mean, I shouldn't be bumping it, uh, but it does give it a little bit of cushion. Now the other thing too is if you are about to do a voiceover, it's probably a good idea to script it first. Okay, so write it down on a piece of paper, big print so you can see it well, read it well, and then read it several times as practice so you get a, a feeling for the flow of the words because it's very important for you to have um, to articulate well when you're doing voiceovers. You you're not having a casual, casual conversation with one of your close friends who may know your voice and may know your manner of speaking. You want to be heard and understood as well as possible by as many people as possible. So you're going to have to enunciate your words as clearly as possible. You'll probably want to speak a little bit more slowly than you normally would. Um, when I'm doing these videos, I, uh, I, I sometimes race a little bit because you know, I know what I want to say, and I just, I want to say it and speed things up, and I don't want to feel like it's dragging. But other times, I'm really trying to make a conscious effort to speak as clearly as I can, and a little bit slower than I normally would, so people that are watching, especially people, if you don't have English as your first language, so you've got a better idea how to understand my videos. So you want to do the same thing when you're recording your audio. 
Okay. Um, so articulation is good. Um, pay attention to the the cadence. The cadence is kind of the rhythm that you're speaking. Make sure you take a pause between sentences. Remember that we're going to be able to edit stuff. So if you need to catch your breath, the best time to do it is at a natural pause in the in in whatever material that you're recording. Okay. So perhaps at the end of a sentence, that would be ideal. I mean, it, it's kind of natural. You're going to breathe when you want to breathe. So try not to do it in the middle of sentences. But remember, we can do some editing here. Now, if you have a false start, um, a false start is just a term when you make a mistake in the first couple sentences. So if you make a false start, you, do, you make a mistake pretty quickly into your material. Probably the best thing to do instead of editing that afterwards, just pause for a second, start again, start fresh because a few less edits is, is a good thing. Okay, now the next thing is, if you are going to make a mistake and you have to pause and restart, try to give it a good solid three seconds. And I say three seconds because everyone thinks three, so they go one, two, three, and it really turns out to be one and a half. Everyone always uh, recovers more quickly than they think they're recovering. But if you give a little bit of time between your places where there might be an edit, it makes it a lot easier for the person doing the editing. Okay. Um, if there's dead air in the middle of your um, voiceover, doesn't matter. We can cut it out. Okay. So don't rush things. Think things clearly and just get yourself mentally prepared. We can fix mistakes. Um, also, this is really important. Now, it's, it's a little bit different for me when I'm talking to a camera, because when I'm talking to the camera, I kind of envision as if I'm talking to a person. I'm talking to you. Okay? When you're doing voiceover work, you're not talking to anyone. So a lot of people have this really monotonous, boring voice. They, they think they're talking to a wall, to an inanimate object. Okay? Don't think about it that way. Pretend your microphone is a pretty girl, or a pretty guy, or a pretty sheep if you like farm animals, whatever. Pretend it's somebody that you want to have a real conversation with, and you're trying to appear interested, whatever, okay? So smile. Smile when you're talking. Um, that kind of thing, for somebody who's listening, if, if, I were to, if you were to be sitting there with your eyes closed and listening to me when I'm talking, and I do two takes. I do one in normal voice, and another when I'm in a really good mood, and smiling and whatever. Um, that natural emotion in your voice carries through. And it's very subtle, but everyone hears it. So if you're in an upbeat mood, or sound like you're happy, when you're doing your voiceover, it's going to sound better. Other than that, I don't have a whole lot of real uh, vocal tips. Um, try and do it when you don't have a cold. Um, try to have a steady voice if you can, although we'll do a little bit of compression in our editing to kind of smooth the peaks and the valleys of our voice. Other than that, there's not much you can prepare to do. Um, maybe stay healthy. A healthy body gives you a healthy voice. So, you know, if you're the sort of person who goes out running for an hour every day, hits a treadmill, goes outside, whatever, goes to the gym, healthy body, healthy voice. voice. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the recording here in just a moment, and I'll try and make a couple of mistakes on purpose, so we have something to edit out. Uh, I'm also going to do, I'm going to make this a little bit longer than I normally would. Now, if I'm doing a voiceover, I usually, if, I, if I'm listening to a DJ doing a radio show, I hate hearing talking throughout the whole show. And so, for the same reason, I don't want to be doing that in my shows. But I am doing a short voiceover, maybe 30 seconds, at the very beginning of the show. Um, kind of add some personality to what you're listening to. And then after you finish your voiceover, you know, you've got your half hour, your hour, two hours of uh, straight music without so many interruptions. So your fans will appreciate not having all kinds of interruptions during the show. But at the same time, it does uh, give a little bit of personality. So don't be scared to do a, a short voiceover at the beginning. Okay, in this one, because I'm using this as an example in a video, I'll probably talk a little bit more than I would at the beginning of a normal show, but I'll try and keep it to, I don't know, 45 seconds, 60 seconds. 
Um, anything else? Yes, make sure there's no background noise if you can. Okay, so what I've done in this situation, I've turned off the fridge. I have a very noisy fridge, and so whenever I'm doing videos or voiceovers, I always turn my fridge off. I always leave a note for myself by the computer, so once I'm done, I remember, oh yeah, I've got to go turn that fridge on, or I'm going to have cold beer tomorrow morning. Um, so yeah, try and make sure you're in a good environment. You don't have to have a perfect studio. Right now I'm doing this in just a basic apartment, and it's going to work just fine. Okay, so let's give it a shot and uh, do a couple takes, if I have to. Maybe I won't have to. Press record. Hello! This, okay, there's something notable. My very first, um, the very first thing I say usually comes through a little bit louder, and you're going to see this once we start editing, so I'm going to try to speak a little bit softly as I'm coming into it. Now that's accentuated even more strongly if you've got your microphone or your recorder on auto level, okay? Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. You're listening to episode number 194 of Subterranean Homesick Grooves. Um, for those of you living in the southeastern New Brunswick area, I'm going to be DJing tomorrow night um, at a place called Duckies, a bar, it's a well-known bar in the area. Uh, the local university, the faculty are on strike, and so I'm coming in to play a little bit of a party at the bar. This is not going to be my usual style of music, if you happen to be expecting that. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm doing a uh, more of a mainstream set tomorrow night. Top 40, some classic hip-hop, uh, pop, indie, you know, all that sort of stuff. Top, top 40 dance music. Anyway, there's no cover charge. Come check it out if you can. Now, as far as tonight's show here on the radio goes, uh, I've got some tracks from Marty, Gaga, and Hello Monkey. I've got Tom Hades, I've got Marco Bailey, and quite a few other producers, so hopefully you enjoy the show. Let's pretend that's a mistake. And of course, if you want to download the show after you've heard it, check out my SoundCloud account at soundcloud.com slash djbolivia. Let's try that once more. As far as tonight's show goes, we've got tracks from producers such as uh, Marty, Gaga and Hello Monkey, Tom Hades. Okay, try that once more. As far as tonight's show... As far as tonight's show goes, we've got producers such as Marty, uh, Gaga and Hello Monkey, Tom Hades, Marco Bailey, and several others. So hopefully you enjoy the show, and of course, if you want to download it afterwards, check out my SoundCloud account at soundcloud.com slash djbolivia. Thanks for listening. Pause. Okay, that should be good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the cameras off. I'll get this loaded up onto the computer. I'll assume that you know how to get the audio file into your computer, and uh, then we'll, we'll start editing. Okay, so now we've got the, um, the audio file loaded into the computer, saved on the hard drive, and I actually made two copies of it, exactly the same. One of them is called 194, VoiceOver 194 Original, one is called VoiceOver 194 Edited. And we haven't actually edited that one yet, but that's the one that we're going to edit. Always good idea to keep a copy of your original material in case you screw something up and you want to go back and start fresh. Okay, uh, two other things. I didn't uh, have a script, but I did, uh, it's always good to have a reminder, even if you're comfortable with your scripting, it's good to have something simple to let you know some key points, just in case you forget, like, who the producers are on this week's show. Uh, and finally, you've got to think about your perspective, too. When is the show going to air? You know, it's Wednesday night right now as I'm doing this video and recording everything. The show plays on Friday night on the radio and, uh, and whatnot, but it's Saturday that I was DJing, or that I'm about to DJ, three days from now. So I have to kind of have that mindset, um, put myself into the time when people are going to be hearing the actual, uh, the voiceover, to make sure I've got my times and dates right. Okay, so let's go into the project, and here's our voiceover 194 edited, that's the one that we're going to edit. Okay, what have we got? Um, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look 
at this big spike and see what that is. You're listening to episode number one. DJ Bolivia, you're listening to episode... Okay, and so my voice came through much too loudly there. Um, let's try just cutting that peak out. This is rather unconventional, but it's going to work. Okay, we've just cut that peak out with the delete key, and let's see if it still sounds all right. Olivia, you're listening to episode... Uh, it still sounds like we've got a little bit of a click there, doesn't it? Let's take a peek again and see why. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, Let's try doing a... Oops, sorry, should have done that. Uh, amplitude and compression amplify, and we're going to cut that little piece by about 12 decibels. Now, I'm cutting this for such a very, very short period of time. You look at that, what's the length of my selection? Duration is uh, one one hundredth, a little over one one hundredth of a second. Uh, you're listening to, uh, you're listening to Well, that's going to stay in there, whatever. Um, let's try cutting it down again a little bit. Let's go about negative seven. Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. You're listening to episode number 100 and... Okay, well that doesn't sound perfect, but... Hello, this... Okay. There's something notable. My very first, um, the very first thing I say usually comes through a little bit louder, and you're going to see this. Hello, my name is Jonathan. Okay, this is the beginning of the useful stuff. So everything before it is garbage. I'm going to delete that. Delete key. Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. You're listening to episode number 194 of Subterranean Homesick Reads. Um, for those of you living in the south... Okay, so I think everything was good up to this point. So, hopefully you enjoy the show. Uh, I've got some tracks from Marty, Gaga, and Hello. Again. Now, as far as tonight's show here on the radio goes... Uh, okay, so that's the part where I kind of wanted to try again. And, of course, if you want to download the show... As far as tonight's show goes, we've got tracks from Kaduka. Okay, so all this stuff from here to about here needs to go Check it out again. as far as tonight's show goes you've got tracks from okay let's zoom in a little bit come check it out again as far as okay let's get rid of that again. as far as tonight's show goes again. as far as tonight's show As far as tonight's show, as far as tonight's show goes, we've got producers such as Marty, uh, Gaga, and Hello Monkey, Tom Hades, Marco Bailey, and several others. So hopefully you enjoy the show. And of course, if you want to download it afterwards, check out my SoundCloud account at soundcloud.com/djbolivia. Thanks for listening. Okay, so actually, I'm going to cut out some more. This piece right here. Let's see how that sounds. As far as that sounds like that pause is just a little bit too long, so let's cut some of that out. Okay, that sounds a little bit more rhythmic, normal. Okay, we don't need this section at the tail end, we don't need this section at the front end. So, now we have what I believe is probably um, appropriate voiceover material throughout the whole thing. Now, we'll probably, we'll double check as we're, as we're playing with this some more, but let's start putting some, uh, let's start changing this somewhat. First of all, what about the volume? Okay, 
Now, looking at the peaks right here, you can see that peak is at around the minus six decibel level. Down here, we're a little closer to maybe minus five and a half. <clears throat> here, about minus five. Here, about minus seven. So the highest points here, here, and maybe here are all around minus five, minus six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the whole thing and I'm going to run it through a compressor. Now, trying to teach you how to use a compressor properly in the space of 60 seconds is not uh, ideal, but let's give it a shot. Single band compressor. And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> basically what a compressor does, it squishes stuff. Okay, so if you had previously a whole lot of peaks and valleys in your volume, in your dynamics, we're going to squash it all so that those peaks and valleys from the lowest points to the highest points are not as tall. Okay, to do this, one of the settings in your compressor is called the ratio. And the ratio is going to be a number like 1.5, 2, 4, 10, whatever. And this is the amount that the, vid that the audio gets squished, okay? So, if I have a ratio of 4, that is probably much higher than I would use if I was editing a vocalist. Because with a vocalist, you still want some natural expression. You want some peaks and lows. Um, but for voiceover, where you want the information to be very clear and a fairly steady volume, it's possible and it's, it makes sense to go with a higher compression ratio. So 4, in my mind, is a moderately high compression ratio. Now you can go, I've seen people do like ratios of 20 because you're basically trying to squish it out to one level. Okay, we're, we don't have to go that far. So we're going to go with a ratio of 4 and what that means is that basically to understand the math the easy way, go 1 divided by your ratio. So our ratio is 4, that means 1 divided by 4, 1 quarter. After we have done this, applied the compressor, the audio that's being compressed, not the whole audio, but the part that we're compressing, is going to be one quarter of its former size, dynamic range. Okay, the other key setting, I'm not going to worry about attack time, just leave it at the default. I'm not going to worry about release time, we'll leave that at the default. And I'm not going to worry about output gain or makeup gain, because we will do that visually afterwards. It'll make a little bit more sense to you, I think. Um, but the two numbers that you do need to know besides the ratio, there's one other number. Threshold, okay? And the threshold is the level above which you're squishing or compressing your audio, okay? So the way I'm going to set this is, I look at this, and this is at a fairly low level. Let's look at the minus 12 band. Is there some stuff above it? Yep. But a fair amount of it's below minus 12. Let's try the line for 18, negative 18. Looking above that, yeah, there's actually quite a bit above it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use minus 18 as my threshold. And that means everything above minus 18 is going to get cut down to one quarter of its former size because of my ratio of 4. Anything below the threshold of minus 18 will not get touched. Okay, so let's, let's take an example. Let's pretend there's part of this file where the sound is at minus 6. The audio level is minus 6. Okay, knowing that minus 18 is our threshold, if we have a piece of audio that's at minus 6, that means how far is it above our threshold? 12 decibels higher, because minus 6 is 12 decibels higher than minus 18. Okay, that 12 decibels gets squished, compressed, and it becomes one quarter of its former size. So that 12 decibels times one quarter, one fourth, becomes three. Okay, so the, that particular spot in the audio, after I have compressed it, is going to be three decibels higher than where it started, than your threshold. 
So that means it's going to go up to minus 15. Hopefully this math makes sense. Um, I'll point to, if this doesn't totally make sense afterwards, don't panic. I'll do a link right here to a section on compression that I put in one of my DJ videos. Hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, so basically from minus 18, our loudest video right now is around minus 5, minus 6. So that stuff is going to be compressed by quite a bit from about 12 decibels above the threshold to about 3 decibels above the threshold. Okay, so let's see what happens. We'll put in our threshold of minus 18 and we will compress, apply. Okay, now our audio is very, very flat and hardly any of it is above um, well, it's, it's not very high there. So let's do as our next step. Let's amplify that a little bit so we can see it better to work with. Okay? And we see that nothing, nothing at all is, is more than, greater than negative 12. So we can bring this up 12 decibels easily, still have some headroom, and we are not anywhere close to hitting our zero decibel line once we apply. Okay? Now, that's still not perfectly smooth. The higher your ratio, the more smooth the top of all these peaks is going to be. Is this good enough? Yeah, sure. It's way better than it was before. Okay. So, rather than work with any more volume leveling or through compression or volume attenuation through increasing, amplifying it, or, uh, or sorry, attenuation cutting, uh, our next step Let's see if we can make it sound a little bit better. So we're going to apply some equalization. We're going to use a parametric equalizer. And you can use pretty much any EQ. Now, normally, default is flat. So when you play it... Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. It's going to sound exactly as it did when you recorded. But what I want to do is I want to cut some of the low end. Now, what's the best way to do that? Let's turn that one right off. Let's use the 1. And we can play with our Q value to make a sharper curve. We'll turn the L back on. Hmm. Uh, no, let's turn that off. I don't really want to get into a huge uh, discussion of how equalization works right now either. Um, I'll just give you some hints. The low end rolled off and the high end rolled off usually work well for my voice. And a tiny bit of a raise at a couple levels. Now let's see what it sounds like. You're listening to episode number 194 of Subterranean Homesick Grooves. Now I'll turn it up. Um, for those of you living in the southeastern New Brunswick area, I'm going to be DJing that's tomorrow on. night um, at a place called that's off. a bar. It's a well-known bar in the area. Uh, the local university, the faculty are on strike. Okay, not a big difference. But to me, that sounds a little bit better. I usually find rolling off some of the deep end, rolling off some of the highs, and a tiny bit of a peak, uh, and a peak down in the low end, sounds good. Now, you can, if you find a level that sounds really good to you, that you want to save, you can save your preset. Um, I have saved a preset in here called SHG Radio Show, and that is what I use when I'm uh, equalizing my voice. Let's see what the preset looks like. Okay, it's very, very similar. Um, now, one thing I should point out is you don't want to increase, amplify frequencies if you can avoid it. Okay, a little bit is okay, but for the most part, um, it works better if you're cutting out frequencies that you don't want rather than boosting the ones that you do want. Now, this, you can see that the zero decibel line across here, you can see that I am raising things here a little bit, and here, and here. That's not, ideally, what I want. I want a little bit lower, I want less of that above zero. Okay? And 
I also have a thing called the master gain. You can see I'm at negative 3.3. Um, what happens is after your individual notches on your equalizer have taken effect, anything that you do to your master gain um, <clears throat> affects things before the, the file gets changed. So by having negative two decibels, you can see this point right here, 0.4. So at the three kilohertz frequency, zero decibels. So I'm not really changing the three kilohertz any at all through my initial equalization, but because there is an attenuation of minus two decibels on the master, on the whole thing, then really what's going to happen is after I hit apply, the frequencies at the 3K will be two decibels softer than they were than they are right now in the original. Okay? My stuff around the I guess that's probably about the 12 kilohertz frequency. That stuff right now is 1.7 decibels above normal, but because of this two decibel attenuation, it's going to end up being 0.3 decibels softer after I hit apply. Okay? And then of course all the stuff down at this low end is going to get cut right out and some of my highs are going to get cut right out. So let's preview this once, see what it sounds like. And so I'm coming in to play a little bit of a party at the bar. This is not going to be my usual style of music if you happen to be expecting that. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm doing a uh, more of a mainstream set tomorrow night. Top 40s. So you can see by most of what I'm doing here is just cutting out the low end because that will uh, not necessarily, it, it doesn't add to the clarity of my voice because my voice, most of what you hear in the human voice, comes between the 1000 hertz frequency, the 1 kilohertz, and up around to say 6 or 8 or 10. So this band right here is where most of the vocal. Is affected, pop, pop, and pop, I'll show you. Maybe, you know all that sort of stuff. Top, top forty dance music. Anyway, there's no cover charge. Come check it out if you can. As far as tonight's show goes, we've got producers such as Marty, uh, Gaga, and Hello Monkey, Tom Hades, Marco Bailey, and several others. So hopefully you enjoy the show. And of course, if you want to download it afterwards, check out my SoundCloud account at soundcloud.com/djbolivia. Thanks for listening. Okay, so you can see some of the different sounds that you get there. Um, I'm just going to leave that as is. And I like that particular equalization. You can play with it. Yours might sound totally different. Depends on your voice and your personal preferences. But I'm going to hit apply. And as I hit apply, because I've got a bit of attenuation, two decibel attenuation, and because most of my changes are below zero, as in cuts, then you should see this waveform get slightly smaller in size because I'm losing some of that amplitude. Okay, it's got a little tiny bit smaller, that's good. So the whole thing is still highlighted. Let's go into reverb next. And I'm going to choose the studio reverb. And this is a pretty complicated effect. There's all kinds of settings here. We are going with the um, let's go with a preset, room ambiance, okay? Now, there's two levels on most of these reverbs. Dry is the unaffected signal. It's the original sound of the signal. Wet is the affected, or affected actually works in this case. Um, the part of the signal that you've affected is the wet. And so you want to use a little bit of each. Let's see what happens. Dry. Okay, so here you're at 100% dry, totally unchanged. Go with wet. That is pure reverb. When I've got the wet at 100%, all you hear is your reflections. You don't want 100% wet. In fact, you want mostly your original signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it at 95% original and 5% wet. See what does what does that sound like? 
you know, all that sort of stuff. Top top forty dance music. Anyway, if there's no cover charge, come check it out if you can. As far okay. as reverb. You probably can barely hear that uh, the difference, especially if you're not on in good headphones. Um, I'll maybe make it a little bit more obvious. I'll go with only 90% dry and 10% wet. I'm at a place called Duffy's, a bar, it's a well-known bar in the area. Uh, the local university, the faculty are on strike, and so I'm coming in to play a little... Okay, that's, that's pretty hard to hear. So, just to really accentuate things, let's try this. We'll a party at the bar. This is not going to be my usual style of music. That's really very obvious, I think, even in computer speakers. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm doing a uh, more mainstream set. Okay, so it kind of, um, I don't know, it, it almost gives a warmth to your voice. Not, well, not a warmth. It, it, reverb sounds better, generally. Um, but most people overdo it. Okay, so if you're going to add some reverb to your voice, I recommend try not to go much past 10% wet signal. Um, of course, this is going to be a huge uh, variation from, from effect to effect, depending which type of reverb you're putting on it. There's lots of different styles of reverb, like there's plate reverb, there's convolution reverb, all sorts of different types, and that's technical descriptions of it. And of course, there's all sorts of different effects in different DAWs. So depending what editor you're using, which version of effect, who knows what will happen. Set the levels to whatever you think sounds good, but remember, overdoing it is a common, uh, common mistake. Many people make it. I'm going to stick with 10% wet, 90% dry, and hit apply. Okay. Now, finally, um, you can see that, where's my peak levels? Uh, just a little bit over 6. Uh, it's closer to 5. I'm going to increase the volume, amplify just a little bit. I'm going to put an extra four decibels on it because I don't think four decibels Oh, that's good. Four decibels of amplification has not caused any of the peaks to hit the zero decibel mark and that's important because you don't want to distort things. Okay, let's see what it sounds like now. Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. Okay, sounds decent. I'm going to highlight a sh shorter section. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, Clark, you can see, DJ Bolivia, you're listening. as I scroll through this, I'm going to be able to see places where I have, um, you can hear me taking breaths. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, now if I want to be really keen, I may want to get rid of those breaths. So I'm going to delete the one at the beginning and I'm going to highlight this and do a fade in because there's this thing called zero crossings in audio. Any audio clip, no matter how short, how long it is, whatever, if you're playing with it in an audio editor, basically you don't want to have zero crossing. You, you want to be doing all your edits at zero crossings if you're cutting the ends of a clip. Okay, so basically you're always fading in from zero decibels or fading out to zero and that's when the clip ends. Because if you cut a clip when, yours, when your volume's not down at zero, you often will get an audible click. Um, and that's not good in a song. Okay, so always fade in the beginning, and at the end we'll delete a little more, and we will do a fade out. Okay. Now, for the rest of it, we're going to hear some pauses, some, uh, sorry, some breaths in the middle. And what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to highlight each breath and I'm going to drop the volume, attenuate it by probably about 12 decibels. So as someone is listening, you're still going to hear me taking the time to breathe, but it's going to be much fainter. It'll sound a little bit more natural. Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. You're listening to episode number 194 of Subterranean Homesick Grooves. Um, okay, so there's the first one. It doesn't have to be a fancy edit. Now, if this was a proper voiceover studio, and there was no background noise to what was being done, like it's an audiobook, people would go through and edit this with much more care, much more attention to detail than I'm doing. But since this is going to play over top of some, uh, some tech house, uh, the little stuff in the background is not going to be that, odd, uh, that obvious. 
Um, the other thing is there's an instrument or an effect or a hardware unit or whatever, um, a process called gating. And if you have a gate, what it does is it only lets audio of a certain volume pass through the gate. So a signal has to be above a certain level, volume, in order for it to go through and be heard. So why is this useful? Why do you only want to hear the loud stuff and not the quiet stuff? Well, if you set it properly, like let's say that all these breaths that I take, the average volume is around minus 20 decibels. I could set my gate above that volume to say minus 15, and then anytime I'm in between words, I'm taking a breath, and I'm below that 15 decibel, minus 15 decibel threshold, then the gate is not going to let the signal through. So it's automatically going to cut out that quiet section where you can sort of barely hear my breathing. When it gets to the words, my volume should be above my threshold, so maybe my volume's around minus 5 or minus 10. That signal is loud enough to be allowed passed through the gate. So basically, it automatically uh, lets all your spoken words go through, but the places where things are quieter, your pauses in between words, it actually doesn't let that signal through, so you get real silence in those areas instead of sort of half close to silence. Okay, We're not going to gate that. Um, that's much too fancy for what we're doing here today. We're just going to go in and... Oh, look, we have a preset called Drop 15. So if I were to go into Effects, Amplitude, Amplify, set this to minus 15 on each side, and apply, boom. It cuts out most of that breathing. Let's see what it sounds like. Oops. Um, for the... Oops. Um, for... Okay, so that sounds good. I could have... I'm going to hit Control z here to undo. Okay, so it's back. I could have done the same thing here with my preset by highlighting that section, go to Favorites, hit Drop 15. Oh, that is not a favorite as I thought it was. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Okay, so we'll just go with the, uh, we'll go through with the, sorry, Effect, Amplitude, Amplify, minus 15s. Um, for those of you living in the southeastern New Brunswick area, I'm going to be Okay, let's cut out this piece. Area, I'm going to be DJing tomorrow night um, at a place called Duckies. Above. I wonder if we can get rid of that little mistake in order. At a place called Duckies. Above. I'm going to be DJing tomorrow night. Um, at a okay, so this word. Um, that's no good. We don't want that there. At a place. At a place called. Okay, so let's see if we can just cut that out. <laughs> a bold move. Jing tomorrow night at a place. Okay, maybe a little less space. Jing tomorrow night at a place called. Hmm. I'm going to try cutting the volume on just that little tiny introduction. Tomorrow night, at a place... Hmm. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Maybe we can get rid of that whole chunk. Does that sound natural? At a place called... At a place called... Um, I'm going to undo. At a place called. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Either way, it's not going to sound quite right. But, uh, let's delete. Eight. At a place called Duckies, a bar, it's a well known bar in the area. Okay, so I'll that's not that. perfect, but it's alright. Uh, we will cut the amplitude here. Uh, the local university, the faculty are on strike, and so I'm coming in to play a little bit of a party at the bar. This is zip car of the air the party at the bar. The one thing I cannot fix is my Canadian accent. Uh, 
party at the bar. This is not going to be my usual style of music, if you happen to be expecting that. Let's just delete that, see if that sounds all right. Do happen to be expecting? Do happen to be expecting? Do happen to be expecting that? Expecting that? Undo. I'm just gonna leave a little bit more space there. Expecting that? Uh, sorry, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm doing a uh, more of a mainstream set tomorrow night. Top. Night, top 40, some classic hip hop, uh, pop, indie, you know, all that sort of stuff. Top, top 40 dance music. Any, any. There's some both noises. We'll delete those. Dance music. Anyway, there's no. 40 dance music. Anyway, there's no cover charge. Come check it out if you can. That seems like it's a pretty long one. I might end up cutting a little bit of time out of this one. if you can. As if you can. As get out if you can. As far as tonight's show goes, we've got producers such as Marty. Marty. Uh, Gaga. Let's cut some out. Marty, uh, Gaga and Hello Monkey, Tom Hades, Marco Bailey, and several others. So, so let's get rid of that with a delete, and then the rest of it we will cut the volume. And several others. So hopefully you enjoy the show. Cut some more out. And several others. So hopefully you enjoy the show. And of course, if you want to download it afterwards, check out my sound. Afterwards, check out my SoundCloud account at soundcloud.com slash DJ Bolivia. Thanks for listening. Hello, my name is... Okay. So, we've cut down our breathing spaces. We've cut some pieces out that were unnecessary to shorten the length a little bit. We have, uh, we did some equalization, some simple equalization, you don't have to get out of control. Uh, some basic reverb, and basically that's all we needed to do. So I like this. Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. I think that's going to sound alright, so I'm going to save that. Okay, so that's all there is to the editing. I have changed my volume. I used a little bit of compression to try and smooth it out. Uh, if you don't understand compression, don't worry about it. I did some basic equalization, very small stuff to just make my sound, my voice sound a little bit better, a little bit more like what I want. Uh, gave it a tiny bit of reverb to kind of deepen it, make it sound better. Again, small doses. Um, if you can obviously hear an effect on something, then you've probably put too much of that effect on. Um, same as DJing, subtlety, subtlety is a good thing. Um, and then I went through and I cut out some of my breathing noises, um, significantly reduced them anyway, and I also chopped out some mistakes, and I chopped out some sections where my voice paused a little bit. So, let's, um, let's add the actual recording of the show, and piece together the introduction. So I'm going to insert... Um, let's use the short intro, um, let's insert the piece that we just edited, voiceover edited, and where did that go? That is way out here for reasons I do not understand. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, 
Oh yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so the piece down here is my normal intro. Okay, so what I want to do is time that so the first beat kind of hits right a little bit sooner. And we'll have it um, not quite at normal volume at the beginning. We'll go down about four decibels and then fade in over the first 10 or 12 seconds. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, that sounds decent. Now let's take our voiceover, see how long it is. Ah, if that was just a little bit shorter, that would sound much better. Southeastern New Brunswick area. I'm going to be DJing. Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. You're listening to episode number 100 and fast forwards. Check out my SoundCloud account at soundcloud.com slash DJ Bolivia. Thanks for listening. Okay, so am I going to have that at the very beginning? No, let's move it up here a little bit into the show just a little, tiny bit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can edit this better. I'm going to have it so when I finish speaking, we go back into a loud section of the song. So I'm going to drop the volume while I am speaking by a little bit. And because this section is thicker, the waveform, it's obviously a little bit louder. So I'm going to drop that even further. So basically, as the show plays, it's at normal volume here, zero decibels. Then, just as I'm about to start speaking, the volume drops by several decibels, so it's easier to hear me. When we get to this loud section of the music, it's going to drop even further, so we're down around minus 9.4. Let's do the same thing on that side, 9.5. 9 and then, once the music gets less loud, I'll let it come up a little bit in the background, but you're still going to hear my talking, and then I'll finally bring it back up to normal volume after I finish talking. So let's see what this sounds like. Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. You are listening to episode number 194 of Subterranean Homesick Grooves. Um, for those of you living in the southeastern New Brunswick area, I'm going to be DJing tomorrow night at a place called Duffy's, a bar, it's a well-known bar in the area. Uh, the local university, the faculty are on strike, and so I'm coming in to play a little bit of a party at the bar. This is not going to be my usual style of music. If you happen to be expecting that, uh, sorry, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm doing a uh, more of a mainstream set tomorrow night. Top 40s, some classic hip-hop, uh, pop, indie, you know, all that sort of stuff. Top, top 40 dance music. Anyway, there's no cover charge. Come check it out if you can. As far as tonight's show goes, we've got producers such as Marty, uh, Gaga, and Hello Monkey, Tom Hades, Marco Bailey, and several others. So hopefully you enjoy the show, and of course, if you want to download it afterwards, check out my SoundCloud account at soundcloud.com slash DJ Bolivia. Thanks for listening. Okay, that sounds pretty good, except right about here, let's try that again. Homesick Roots. Um, for those of you live... So, do we want that little... Um, for those See, I made a little mistake there. That's that's not a word. Um, for those, um, for those, of let's see if we can just cut that out. For those of you living in, yeah, I think that sounds a little bit better. Roofs. For those of you, subterranean homes. Let's cut out a little bit more. Subterranean homesick roofs. For those of you living in the southeastern New Brunswick. Uh, I'm not going to cut that out. Homesick roofs. For those of you living in the... Okay, so I'm going to save that. We'll go back into our multi-track. Now, because I cut a little bit out, that's shorter, so... DJ Bolivia, thanks for listening. We can move that up a little bit more. And let's check our volumes at the beginning. Okay, I don't need to cut that down quite so quickly.
Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia. You're listening to episode number 194 of Subterranean Homesick Grooves. For those of you living in the southeastern New Brunswick area, I'm going to be DJing soundcloud.com slash DJ Bolivia. Thanks for listening. Hey, that sounds great. So that's what I'm going to use as my uh, final version of the radio show. Now, something I should point out is obviously I put a lot of work into this. Um, if I was doing this without doing the video, I probably could have done all that work in about three to five minutes if I was in a rush. Um, I probably would spend very little time uh, do it quickly. But the more time and care that you put into your editing, the better it's going to sound. So think about that. Think about uh, presenting yourself to your audience as professionally as possible. Um, dropping the music out in the background so they can hear your voice better, uh, trying to speak clearly. You know, take several takes. If The first couple times I did this process years ago, you know, it might have taken me probably five or eight takes before I finally had one I was happy with, and then I would start editing that one. At this point now, I'm a little bit more comfortable with the process, and, and sometimes I don't even bother going through all this editing work. You know, there's times when I'll just... Um, when I'm just recording in real time, I'll just turn the microphone on and just speak over the music in real time and uh, just use that. But anyway, certainly knowing this process will let you produce something that sounds a little bit more professional, especially if you're going out to a bigger audience. It's worth you taking the time to, to make yourself sound as good as you can. Okay, so I'm going to have a second video here shortly. I'll put a link up to it as soon as that's ready, and that'll be the one that talks about how to make that introduction. Um, this this section here. Um, so I'll have that video ready very shortly, and uh, hopefully these things will let you uh, enhance the quality of your mixes for your listening audience. Okay, thanks for watching, and, and of course, don't forget to check out my um, videos page if you want to see some of the other videos related to DJing, audio production, music production, stuff like that that I've uh, put together. Cheers!